there is a, a new look to Valencia on the field and also off it. After impressing in coaching roles at Dundee United and Rio Ave, it's been quite a rise for Nuno Espirito Santo's new number two, Ian Cathro, as Charles Patterson found out. A lot of work, uh, a lot of sacrifices, I think. Um, probably being brave to, to leave home comforts, you know, and being, being interested in searching for other opportunities and, and wanting to grow maybe away from Scottish football. A little bit, you know, in order to leave and, and grow up, and that that led to me spending two years as an assistant coach to to Nuno Street Centre in, in Rio Ave in Portugal. You know, how did you get into the coaching world? Because it was it was not necessarily the way that most people would. I mean, High school. Years, you should still be playing. High school. Still a player, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd just be approaching my best years, I think. Um, right from school, right from school, it wasn't something that I had particularly planned on. Um, like everybody, uh, I played football with the kind of faint aspiration of being able to play without ever quite being, uh, being capable or, or maybe quite wanting it enough. Um, and it led to me getting involved in a coaching course, uh, an SFA, simple you know, level one coaching course with everyone would start. And my interest kind of naturally picked up to the point where I started a business to, to coach young players as a 16 year old still at school. From the point of view of Spanish football, how has it and its style of play influenced your coaching methods, if at all? I suppose Spanish football was, was something that shows all of us the importance of just the individual technical capacity of, of a player. To be able to manage himself through the situations that the, the game exposes him to. And it's, you know, without knowing too much about the organisation of the game in, in a tactical sense, because I was, I was really young at the time, I appreciated the, the technical situations that were happening in, in the games and, and you know, players in that league and, and the, the rhythm of the football over there, I think, was a reference for a young coach to figure out how can I help this 12-year-old potentially grow these things to maybe be able to go there one day. Tell us about your relationship with Nuno. Um, how does it work day to day? Um, you know, what's, uh, what are his methods and his kind of philosophy? Are they similar to yours? I think we work well together. We think well together as well as the other staff. You know, there's, there's four of us around the table at all times, all with you know different backgrounds and different you know, different points of view on certain things, different areas of expertise, and uh, I think the, his leadership is something which is really quite impressive in being able to collate all of those things and, and put his vision down onto the pitch. How's your Spanish? My Spanish is probably worse than what it was five years ago because I think I'm, uh, I'm listening and I'm understanding Spanish perfectly well. I then open my mouth to respond and Portuguese comes out. <laughs> so it's, uh, it'll come back around. What do you think you can achieve this season? Then? I think Valencia Football club, and I think Valencia is a city and a place, and, and the people need their club to be playing midweek in the Champions League. Uh, you walk around the city, you, you, you feel the, the importance of that football club. It must be playing Champions League football. Therefore, you know, the question beforehand is probably null and void because that Top must board. happen. That must happen. Yeah, my uh, full respect for him for going abroad and being very successful indeed. And is he part of a new sort of generation of British coaches that are wanting to do that? And you've got your own little story about him as well, haven't well, you? Well, I, uh, I was talking one day in, over lunch with Diaz Boas about um, a plan that Guy Caminiti and Dieta and I had of buying a club in the fifth division in Spain. Crazy idea, by the way, but uh, we tried it. And we had a whole team together and he said, who would you think would be kind of the manager? We want a manager of this and that. And he gave me his, Ian's number. And, uh, and I rang Ian, and uh, he was so polite, uh, but very quickly I realised that uh, he was very ambitious and fifth division in Spain wasn't what he was looking for, which kind of surprised me because, like, but you're a kid, and I'm giving you a chance to get into it. But no, he was thinking uh, ahead of myself, and, and actually that's what you're getting from a lot of coaches in England now, in Britain generally. The idea of, uh, okay, let's see what is out there. We are watching Spanish football every week. We've seen that there is something different that we're not doing here. Let's find out what it is. And in the past, you get 
uh, coaches who are perhaps 10 years old that would just go there, see a bit of, see a game, see a player, go back home. Now they're talking, I'm organizing three coaches in different parts of Spain to go there and to spend a whole week with the coach, with the manager, trying to see what, how it works, trying to see the academy and taking all that on board and then go back home and, and continue their learning. They want to learn, it's just fantastic to see. What happened to that club? You're going to buy? Uh, that was when the whole Spain collapsed and uh, there's no money anywhere, so uh, that idea has been abandoned, postponed. Uh, Gibber, you've lived in Spain and you've worked obviously scouting really, I mean why do you think that British people don't want to go out and maybe be 